Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here is you once again. Now it's time for episode 133 of Album of the Day, in which, uh, you know, uh, today on my kind of, you know, six review streak to like January 1st, uh, 1st, uh, 2017 of, uh, of, uh, Yep Rock albums, as I'm a member of their honorary completist club, I'm here to talk about a, um, a, uh, uh, Cal a uh, California-based uh, singer-songwriter and guitarist that uh, who's uh, you know uh, who's sort of genres are sort of like like you know like like Americana uh, folk rock as well as like uh, alternative country and stuff like that um, and um, the three and 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 also uh, there's and and uh, you know he's and he was originally known to sort of be the front man of a band known as Brantley Buffalo that you know had been around in like you know the 1990s uh, now pursuing a solo career and he's recently moved to Nashville from California um, you know like in the past couple of years or so uh, so I'm here to review his first album on Yep Rock I'm talking about the singer-songwriter known as Grantley Phillips, who, uh, you know, after Grantley Buffalo has been pursuing a solo career, so I'm here to review, like, his first solo effort that's on Yep Rock Records that was released back in March, so this is kind of a belated review for the record, but, you know, I've been enjoying this record quite a bit and wanted to talk about it. So, his new album is called The Narrows, uh, and uh, this is actually a signed copy that I got sent from Yep Rock that, you know, that he signed here, a CD copy, uh, second album release, the third album release that, yeah, Brock had put out, um, and, uh, you know, definitely, uh, a record that I would say would have to be probably, you know, possibly the best Americana album of 2016, um, like, um, 16, from the lyrics to the production to the vocals, it's definitely fantastic. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in, I'll give it a more detailed description, you know, later in the review, but I'm just going to show you what the CD packaging looks like. 13 songs on it, about 40, 30, uh, uh, uh about 54 minutes long, and, um, produced by Grantley Phillips himself. Um, yeah, there's the liar notes there, and probably a photo, yeah, like a photo there, I think, you know, him, and, you know, you know, I wonder if, you know, the children in these photos might be his children, but, uh, maybe not, but who knows, but anyway, there's the liner notes, the disc, and, and then there's, like, uh, another picture there, of a little girl there. Mm. And also, you know what, in this review I'm also going to talk about my experience of seeing Grantley Phillips uh, live, uh, which was um, at uh, the Stoltz Listening Room in uh, the Avalon Theater in Easton, Maryland, which was a great show. It, you know, the show was in November, Sunday, November 6th, uh, it was when it uh, was the day of the show was the night of the show, and I'll talk a little bit about that in this review, but anyway, that's the packaging for uh, the new Grantley Phillips album uh, called, called The Narrows. So yeah, um, so yeah, uh, you know, this uh, album is, I think, is uh, fantastic, you know. Uh, you know, I'm definitely, you know, I'm gonna Say say a lot of great things about it. Like uh, first, I think I'm gonna talk about the the songwriting and vocal spectrum of things before I go on to the instrumentation and the production, you know, side of things here. Um, the first song that I want to highlight lyrically, like the lyrics on this album, are fantastic, very poetic, very emotional, uh, eh, and and stuff like that. Uh, the first song I want to highlight lyrically is the song Moccasin Creek. Uh, definitely one of the best songs here on this album. Like, Grant Lee Phillips' vocal, I think, paints the story of this song really beautifully. Um, and he's, this is sort of a song about him sort of 
longing to, you know, get, get back to that place in his life that was very special to him. So he makes references to, like, you know, how his, his, his grandpa was buried there and, and how it was a pretty bit, how it made a pretty big impact on him. So, packed. So, so it pretty much sums, sums it up, you know, uh, especially with the very poetic line, one of these days I'm going to dip my feet in Moccasin Creek. Um, Creek. Um, you know, but, you know, there's also a sense of, like, catharsis to, uh, and somewhat a bit of optimism and hope, you know, to the album, too. You know, if you look at songs like the opener on this thing, Tennessee Rain, which, uh, you know, has, um, Sea Rain, which, uh, you know, has, uh, some very kind of, you know, uh, cathartic, l uh, lyrics, like, long as you, I got your back, I'm stronger than a mule. Even as he says stuff like, want, wash all the tears from my eyes. Um, uh, another song that I think, uh, you know, uh, shows this sense of catharsis is the second song in here, Smoke and Sparks, which, you know, is another favorite, tr which is another favorite track of mine here on this album. Um, track on here, uh, you know, uh, probably my favorite song on here would have to be Monk Sing Creek, but another favorite of mine on here would have to be the song, uh, Smoke and Sparks, um, which, yeah, it's features some very cathar cathartic sort of, uh, and very poetic lines on here, like, you know, so, like, uh, you know, I won't be afraid, uh, I'll, I'll rise from the flames like smoke and sparks, um, song there. Um, but then there are definitely some more uh, heartbreaking songs that, while they sound kind of, you know, so like, and also, you know, really great, uh, you know, very powerful vocal performance on the opening track, Tennessee Rain. Um, but then there are definitely some songs on here that, you know, while they do sound kind of upbeat, they have some pretty heartbreaking lyrics. Specifically, Another favorite track of mine on here, the song Cry Cry, which, uh, you know, sounds like upbeat and, uh, you know, sounds like the appropriate choice for a single, because it was actually the first single from the album, uh, you know, but it does feature heartbreaking lyrics, you know, about how, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, there's pretty heartbreaking, uh, you know, lyrics on this track, like, uh, in the winter when the streams are frozen, uh, in the winter when the birds don't sing, that's when I lost my home, when I lost everything. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely kind of a sad song about how, you know, how, you know, that stream that meant so much to him, when it's frozen, you know, there's pretty much, you know, you, you know, it seems like a, a lot of the hope is lost for him there. Um, it's lost for him there. Um, but, you know, the true, like, you know, just very heartbreaking and gorgeous ballads on this thing would have to be songs like uh, Yellow Weed, like the song Yellow Weeds, which uh, features some um, of uh, the song Yellow Weeds, which, uh, you know, features uh, some, features, you know, uh, some lyrics. Uh, Basically, you know, kind of referring to, yeah, to, 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 like, you know, his home from, you know, his childhood or something like that. And, you know, how, you know, it, you know, just isn't the same as it used to be, you know, like, like, he, like, you know, so he makes references to, like, you know, his old school, which is, like, you know, the same place, you know, his father used to go and, you know, and, and also, like, you know, to... And also, there are, like, too many fences. And also, there are, like, too many, you know, uh, uh, fences built. So, he no longer hears, like, the laughing of the children there and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, he just feels swallowed whole by these yellow weeds, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> weeds, pretty much. And, you know, it's just a really beautiful ballad on the record. Um. Uh, there's, um, the record, um, you know, the, 
or um, you know, uh, and, and then we have uh, the song uh, "Holy Irons," which you know seems to have a little you know religious references in there. You know, uh, like uh, "Lay down your holy irons" is gonna beat you up to raise the dead, but you know, not in the way that's like really preachy. Thank God, um, you know, and uh, on, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, and it sounds a little, like, band-inspired a little bit, which, you know, we'll talk about it, like, you know, mu musically in a little bit. Um, and, you know, I do really like, you know, Grantley Phillips's vocal performance on that song and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, then we sort of, you know, uh, some of the stories sort of take a time warp back to, like, the 30s, like, you know, like even before Grant Lee Phillips was born, and I'm talking about the song, um, Taken on Weight in Hot Springs, which, uh, you know, sort of the protagonist is, seems to be this man in the 1930s who, um, you know, takes on weight in, in, in hot springs all the time, and, you know, sort of, and, and, you know, sort of talking about how he's, like, you know, making lots of friends in hot springs and stuff like that. So, like, you know, you know, trust me, I know what I'm talking about, because I saw him live, and he kind of told a story about what this one was about before he played it. This was, like, the fourth song that he played at the show, pretty much. Um, once, and, and he nailed it there. Um, there. Uh, and then, um, so, so, and then we have, uh, just another, just another river town, which is definitely another like, highlight for me on this record, you know, what just a really great Americana song there, uh, with, um, the lyrics about how, you know, this, uh, how, you know, how, uh, you know, Grantley Phillips' hometown was pretty much just another river town, uh, town, and, 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 and I just, and, and one of my, and one of my favorite lines here, uh, when that steel guitar rings out, be be thankful you're on dry ground because this place is just another river town. That's poeticism right there, Grantley Phillips, and 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 I'm loving it. Um, loving it. Um, there's that uh, another really heartbreaking ballad on this record, the song "No Mercy in July," which is definitely just you know really you know uh, another just really beautiful you know country ballad right here. Sort of uh, lyrics about how you know, so so yeah, so I can see why the South is called the Narrows. There are references to like rivers and streams and rain and stuff like that, but yet they seem to be kind of the you know the seem to be kind of the emotional conduit here on this album. Um, but but they seem to be kind of the emotional conduit here on this album. So it's kind of interesting how this song is basically kind of longing for rain to come down in July in a season where there's a cloudless sky and almost no rain at all, you know, and rain at all, which, you know, I know what you might be saying. How can that, uh, you know, be, 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 a, be a bad thing? Well, you know, when you know, Grantley Phillips sort of, you know, on here, you know, sort of, you know, it, and, you know, this isn't just bluntly a song about, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, this, isn't, this isn't just a song bluntly about just, you know, I want rain to come down because I'm tired of sunny weather. You know, this isn't just very bluntly a song about that. You know, it's rather just, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know, he just sort of longs, you know, for, he just, you know, he just sort of longs for that rain because, you know, otherwise, you know, uh, there, there, there isn't a whole lot of mercy, you know, see, you know, uh, in the sense of, like, this hometown that he's sort of referring to a lot on this album, pretty much. Um, much, uh, there are element, and, uh, you know, um, but, you know, then we do, and, uh, and then also we have just the amazing, you know, uh, uh, track, uh, San Andreas Fault, which is another one that I heard was inspired by True Offense. This isn't necessarily a song simply about the San Andreas Fault, you know, or 
fault, like, you know, driving, uh, like, dropping the entire state into the Pacific Ocean. Rather, it's, um, you know, it's kind of a song dealing with, you know, this, uh, you know, and, you know, the story kind of goes back from true events of, like, Brantley Phillips' life around the time of the San Andreas Fault. Around 94, um, which is around 1994, you know, like, like, you know, basically what he is, like, you know, you know, uh, like, like, like him and his wife, you know, you know, went to bed and stuff like that, and, and then eventually, like, woke up and, you know, and, and then eventually they just, you know, got out of the house, you know, with the dog, you know, uh, his, his guitar and his banjo and stuff like that, like, yeah, like, this is a story that he, really interesting story that he told at the show that I saw him at, and, uh, and, you know, the song, you know, is just, you know, uh, uh, amazing, like, you know, not just with, uh, the, the lyrics and, you know, and how powerful it is, but I feel what really makes the song that much more effective is Grantley Phillips' phenomenal vocal performance on this track. When he gets to that more, when, when, when he gets into that higher range and just belts it out, it's just, I'm kind of speechless on that performance there. Um, Listen on that performance there, like, you know, his vocals do a good job of car uh, carrying his emotions uh, and, you know, his uh, lyrics uh, and his tough time really nicely. Um, uh, really nicely, like, you know, like, you know, he just has, you know, he just has a great, you know, phenomenal voice, pretty much, you know, so. So, so like, and, you know, it's a really nice, like, vehicle for, like, his lyrics pretty much on there. Um, but you know, there 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 is a room for, you know, a few love songs on here too. Uh like, you know, the really fun track Rolling Pin uh pin on here uh is which has one of the best hooks on the entire album in my opinion. You know, some other great hooks on the album would have to be like Tennessee Rain, uh Just Another River Town and Holy Irons too. Um as well as the closing track, uh, Find My Way, which, uh, you know, is sort of a song, sort of, you know, he, he feels lonely, but, you know, he keeps on walking, you know, trying to get back to that person in his life that he really cares about. Um, um, and, uh, you know, the, um, you know, but, you know, before I go on to talking about the production spectrum of things here on the record, um, you know, uh, you know, I'm just gonna quickly talk about the song that's probably my least favorite song on here. Uh, the song Loaded Gun, which, uh, I do like the lyrics on it, but, um, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, tempo-wise, maybe a little too fast for me, uh, with the dry, with the driving guitars, bass, and drums on there. And I don't, eh, and, 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 you know, the lead vocal is alright, but, you know, don't quite care for it, the more high-pitched backing vocal, like, you know, in the mid, like, during the instrumental break of the song. Uh, you know, you know, e even though I do think the guitar solo at the end is okay. But, you know, you know, that little critique aside, you know, I'm about to say more positive things about the album, which would be the production on here. The production on this thing is great. You know, uh, you know, the album produced by Grantley, was produced by Grantley Phillips himself. And it was recorded in Nashville at a Easy Eye Sound studio, which is a studio in Nashville that's owned and operated, you know, mostly by Dan Auerbach of the Black Keys. But, you know, Dan Auerbach wasn't, like, working at the studio at the time when uh, Grantley Phillips was recording this, so he kind of lent the studio to him, pretty much. Uh, which, it, But, you know, I think it is a good thing that he wasn't involved in the production of this thing, as... A lot of the albums he's produced lately weren't that good. Um, good, um, good in my opinion. Um, but, you know, just, you know, uh, the recording, the production, and the mixing of this thing sounds great. Uh, mixed by uh, Colin Dupuy, who did a good job recording and, like, mixing the entire album there. Uh, who, like, works a lot at Easy Eye Sound. And the two uh, other musicians accompanying... Brantley Phillips for a bulk of this, or uh, Jerry Rowe on drums, as well as uh, Lex Price, who played electric and upright bass, as well as a bit of guitar and banjo in there, too, uh, too as well. 
Uh, you know, so yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the instrumentation on here. Like, the opening track, Tennessee Rain, features some really, you know, just, uh, fe uh, uh, features some really great, like, howling slide riffs on there. Um, and then also we have Smoke and Sparks, which, uh, has, which, you know, has really nice, uh, rhythmic, uh, acoustic guitars, uh, upright bass and drums, so the guitars, bass and drums sound great up here, as well as some really, uh, gorgeous piano, droney baritone guitar, as well as kind of droney keyboards in the background, too, uh, ooh, that back up, you know, his kind of softer vocal really nicely, you know, which works really well after, you know, uh, you know, his kind of emotional, uh, belted vocal performance of, uh, Tennessee Rain there. Then we have Moccasin, then we have Moccasin Creek, which features this really, you know, beautiful, uh, fiddle melody played by Eric Gorfain on here, as well as, uh, it's really, as well as some really nice bazooki on there too, which is like a Greek string instrument there that's actually used a little bit in, like, folk and alternative country too, uh, and Americana. Um, uh, then we have Cry Cry, which, you know, has a really nice, uh, kind of rhythmic, uh, uh, marimba, you know, uh, marimba melody on there too, which the marimba is actually played by, a, a Jerry Rowe on here, and, you know, it's definitely, a, I think the song, and I think it's kind of a crucial element to, like, the instrumentation of the recording of the song specifically. And then it's also painted really nicely with kind of a, you know, wheezy Mellotron in the background. Um, Tron in the background, you know, has a great hook on it. Like, I really like the acoustic guitar, bass, drum, tambourine, and electric guitar hook on the song, I think is, you know, great and, you know, kind of euphoric, too. Um, Holy Irons, you know, um, had, as I said, kind of sounds like the bands and really love the, uh, really love the very gorgeous, uh, guitar and mandolin, you know, uh, riffs that back up the, uh, go up the bass and the drums. And then it goes a little jazzy once a vibraphone comes into the bridge, you know, for maybe a little instrumental curveball, but, you know, not really in a super odd way, but it sounds really nice on there. And then there's also backup vocals during the instrumental break from Lex Price and um, and Jerry Rowe that do sound like, um, do kind of sound a little bit like the band, a little bit. Uh, Russ Paul is the pedal steel player on this album, and, you know, and he really, and, and he really colors, you know, the songs, uh, Yellow Weeds, uh, Just Another River Town, uh, San Andreas Fault, and find my way, and find my way, really beautifully, especially when it gets to like, you know, the solos on some of these tracks, especially just another River Town, the amazing, uh, you know, just gorgeous solo on them, uh, San Andreas Fault too, um, too on Yellow Weeds we're also getting some really nice kind of, you know, nice kind of, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, you know, haunting sort of, you know, uh, thing, like droney, you know, uh, bar baritone guitar on there too. Um, too. Uh, and then, uh, and then we have Rolling Pin, which just has a really infectious, which has an almost infectious, uh, guitar and banjo hook on there that I really like a lot on there. And, you know, the guitar solo on there is amazing. It's just a fun, you know, kind of like, barroom sounding kind of song in there, you know, and, and there is a bit of barroom piano if you listen very carefully, which I didn't realize till like a few, until like, you know, uh, the last few times I listened to it, um, to it, but it's, but, but that sounds really nice on there, and, and yeah, the hook on there is great with the layered vocals and stuff like, and stuff like that, that and the great lyrics on there. Uh, Taken on Weight in Hot Springs, uh, you know, features this kind of, you know, uh, folky sort of, features this kind of, uh, features the use of a resonator guitar, you know, that's like multi-tracked, you know, 
it's a it's like multi track like you know four tracks high or something like that and it sounds really you know folky and you know bluesy and really nice on that track uh, along with the very along with the very uh, uh, beautiful uh, full very uh, vivid and you know sort of detailed vocal performance on there too um too. Two. Just another river town is great. Talked about the amazing steel guitar solo in there. Also has a little bit of B3 organ, which gives it a really great kind of Americana atmosphere. Played by Jamie Edwards on there. Um, it's on there. It's, you know, just a really great alt country Americana song. Probably the closest to that genre, to sounding like that genre on here, and it does a really nice job there. No Mercy in July, really gorgeous ballad with, you know, very, with, with just weepy slide guitars and really just, you know, haunting and gorgeous, you know, uh, you know, pump, uh, pump organ on there too, um, going on there too, like, you know, and, you know, that slide melody is just, you know, uh, really colors the song really nicely there. There, and then San Andreas, San Andreas Fault, while it is just, like, about, uh, acoustic guitar, pedal steel, bass, drums, and vocals. It does leave a pretty big impression, especially especially once it builds up with the amazing steel guitar and Grantley Phillips' just, you know, very effective vocal performance. And then, of course, it closes with Find My Way, which, uh, you know, it's uh, kind of a softer ballad, you know, painted really nicely by some steel guitar there. Uh, so, yeah, um... Overall, I think, you know, this is a great record, uh, you know, and also I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, the show before I head out, uh, you know, like, you know, the show that I saw Grantley Phillips at. Um, of course, I mentioned the venue that I saw him at, which was really nice and definitely I, I like the I like these kind of smaller venues pretty much, you know, uh, you know, over the kind of, you know, bigger venues pretty much, yeah. Like, you know, I think the small venues, I like kind of the intimacy of that, uh, you know, because it kind of allows you to focus more on the music, pretty much, you know. Uh, music, pretty much, yeah. Just, and I like going to an environment where, I mean, pretty much, I, I mean, nearly everybody in there was pretty much re very focused on the music, pretty much, and... You know, I wasn't just, you know, getting distracted by, like, looking at their phones or being on Twitter or, you know, stuff like that, you know. Or and stuff like that. You know, I, I like environments like that. And Grantley Phillips, he went solo at this show, just him and his acoustic guitar and a microphone. But I will admit, and, and he did a really good mix of, like, old and new songs. And there's actually quite a few fans of his there that actually knew some of the older songs on there. He played like seven songs off the new album. He played Tennessee Rain, that was the first song in the set. And also he played Holy Irons, Smoke and Sparks, and Taken on Weight and Hot Springs. Uh, those those are the first four songs that he played actually. Uh, but then he also played uh, Cry Cry, as well as San Andreas Fault, uh, and, uh, you know, I actually made a request for him to play Moccasin Creek, which is probably my favorite song here. And he played it and absolutely nailed it with that one. Um, and, um, and I will admit that when he played the new songs, and, as well as the old songs, too, I think they sounded much more powerful when it was just him, you know, uh, solo, than it is like, uh, you know, here on the record with the full band, even though it sounds amazing on here with the full band, too. Um, but yeah, he told lots of really interesting stories. He was pretty happy to be there. You know, uh, you know, was, a was able to, like, you know, uh, talk to people, tell some really interesting stories. And, and, and yeah, he, he was quite entertaining, that's for sure. Um, and, I, and I usually try to, you know, uh, whenever I go to all these smaller shows, I usually try to make sure I, you know, at least get to say hello to them before I leave. So after the show was over, he was like, you know, at, at a little, it wasn't really like a big merch table, but he was, you know, he was signing CD copies of the new record and saying hi to people and stuff like that. So eventually I, I caught his attention 
And then, you know, said hi to him, told him that I, that the copy that I have of this is signed and stuff like that. And uh, how I'm a member of the Honorary Completist Club for Yep Rock Records. And, you know, he, he thought that was pretty cool and stuff like that. And, uh, like, uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and, it, and that I thought, you know, the, you know, the show was great and, and, and how, I th you know, just, you know, thought it was a, and, and how I just, you know, thought, uh, and, and, and how, um, you know, I, you know, like, do, like, album reviews and YouTube and stuff like that, uh, and yeah, I thought, thought it was pretty cool, so yeah, it was a great show, you know, and a great album over here from Grantley Phillips, yeah, I'm, I'm going with a strong 8 out of 10, uh, for this, uh, new Grantley Phillips album, The Narrows, which is possibly the best Maricon album of the year. And um, I'll see you for episode 134.